Hello, my name's Joel Dunning. Uh, I'm CTS Net Editor in Chief, and I am delighted to be with Stephen Spindel. Thank you very much, Stephen, for joining us. Uh, you're at the Division of Cardiovascular Surgery at the Oshner Medical Center in New Orleans. But the reason we have asked you to come on is because your videos are just smashing it. Uh, they've had about triple the normal views that we would normally get. And, and your your video, the aortic hemiarch replacement, the seven minute technique, had three and a half thousand views just in its uh, first couple of days which is absolutely fantastic and uh, so I'm so delighted to have you here and to me it just made so much sense this first video you know I, I wanted to call it keep it simple stupid because you know there was a lot of simplicity it just made a lot of sense to me so so Stephen maybe if you could uh, just say hi and tell us a little bit about that brilliant video that you sent in for us absolutely thank you for having me on firstly I mean, you know, the video, as you said, is just to keep things simplistic. And I, I love the title, actually, you know, keep it simple, stupid is, is the right way to go, which is, you know, there's just a lot of complexity that goes on with uh, aortic arch surgery. And sometimes if you can just simplify the steps, then it could be something that everybody can use. And, you know, we won't have to be afraid of leaving some aortic disease behind in the hemi arch and we just, you know, knock it out. And, and that's really it. Just you know, cannulate distally, you know, cool down to about, you know, 26 to 28 degrees Celsius, take off the clamp, cut out the disease portion, and just knock it out, you know, do a 4 SH, nice big travels, you know, perfectly place that suture through there, a needle through there, and, and yeah, it, it usually is, um, you know, nice and easy, and it'd be six to seven minute circ rest, easy peasy. And, uh, and I, I love the way that you talk about the reproducibility of just sticking to seven minutes. You know, for the surgeons out there, out there going, well, I'm not sure I can do that. You know, um, and I, I think the beauty is sticking to seven minutes, keeping it quick. You don't need cerebral perfusion. You don't need to go to 20. Do you think they should practice? What are the key tricks to making sure you can keep it consistent to seven minutes? Yeah, I think one of the best parts about this procedure and this technique is really just that all it is, it's only one circle to another circle. You know, it's no felt, there's no, you know, inversion, there's no, you know, complexity with the integrated cerebral perfusion. It's just that you take the clamp off, you cut out the disease, and you're still one circle to another circle, which every surgeon has done, and every surgeon continues to do. You know, it's just think about an aortotomy and closing it up. And I'm sure, you know, many, many surgeons are closing aortotomies very, very quickly. Same exact concept, but um, just in a different location. And I think that's really what makes it so reproducible. And, and yeah, I'm sure a lot of people find it uh, sort of uh, interesting to see single layer, no Teflon pledgets. Uh, you know, for those that are doing all that and double layers and taking 25 minutes, you know, how could they transfer to this technique? Is it a practice thing? Is it correct selection? You know, how, how could they move to your technique? Yeah, I think that is actually one of the, the biggest changes with this technique is actually just trust trusting in your ability with the the needle and trusting in that graph to be hemostatic because you know we are ingrained to think about these you know, the, the felt strips and doing double layers and you know multiple different suture styles for um, closing this up but you know if you just trust that this will actually work and, and just make that one graft go into you know the the arch or the hemi arch I mean it, it's really nice and straightforward you do it once and I doubt you're going to go back to doing, you know, felt. I would say that you're doing this technique um, it is probably going to take a little bit longer if you're going to do it on, say, an aortic dissection where the tissue is a little bit more fragile, but it's still very fast. Same exact style, um, but it's still, you know, with aortic dissection, I just take, you know, maybe a little bit bigger bites, you know, maybe, uh, maybe a centimeter to centimeter and a half in depth inside the aortic arch just because it's fragile tissue, but it still works very, very well. Um, but I mean, an elective hemiarch, this is perfect on because that tissue is usually pretty good and you generally don't have any issues with hemostasis at the end. And in your practice, in your experience, keeping the patient warmer, less cross clamp time, do you think that has benefits in terms of what you see post-operatively? Can you tell a difference? Absolutely. I mean, it's great to just have a patient that's only 26, 20 degrees Celsius, and then, you know, 
you, while you're cooling, it doesn't take long to cool. You're working on other parts, they were degrued or whatever it might be. And then rewarming doesn't take long either. And so at the end of the case, you know, coagulopathy is at a minimal and it, it barely adds any time to the overall case. And so if you are doing a root replacement and you're hesitating, should I do a root and a hemiarch? The hemiarch is a little big, but it's not massive. Well, when you have a technique that's so simple and so quick, then you're not going to be worrying about the coagulopathy at the end because you cooled to 20 or 22 degrees Celsius. You're not going to be worrying about the anti-grade cerebral perfusion or cannulating the axillary artery. You know, and, and then lastly is that you just know at the end of the case, it's only going to add maybe about 15, 20 minutes total to the, the whole overall operation. So it, it's pretty nice um, addition to any arch or root operation that you're considering. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a fabulous video. It's really, really nice. I encourage people to have a quick chat, quick tick on it. It doesn't take too long. Uh, it's a really wonderful video. And you've actually got a few other real bangers uh, on uh, CTSnet. The other one I really, really liked was another sort of simplifying technique uh, where you debranch the aortic arch, but completely off-pump technique. This just made so much sense to me. I thought, wow, what a great thing. You know, not even on bypass. Maybe just uh, if you could mention a few a few words about that video and, and how often you use that in your practice yeah absolutely i think that's a, a nice video as well just because it's simple you know the key with that view i've always read about you know uh deep branching and i've seen a few deep branching i've been a part of deep branching in residency but they're actually they're, there are very few videos out there that go step by step through deep branching and so i just wanted to make something so that other people can see when they encounter you know something similar scenario that it, it can be done very simplistic you know and when you look at a video versus reading it on like online or you know in a textbook it, it actually makes it like oh yeah i can do that it's not that big of a deal to do you know, because, you know, an arch branching is pretty uncommon, you know, maybe you might see one every year or so. So it's pretty uncommon. But when it comes up, it, it's very nice to actually be able to, you know, click on, you know, a, a website, especially something like CTSNet, which has many, many, many helpful videos, you know, and you can find this video and just go for it. And, and these things really, really help, I think, really, really help, you know, junior attendings as well as, you know, residents and fellows get a better grasp for uh, the overall surgery in these situations. Yeah, and, and of course, the, the other video that made my eyes completely pop out that you posted uh, is the, the Cabrol patch with the Cooley Vistula. I totally honestly had never heard of this technique before. Uh, I, I was nearly sick in a bucket when I saw it, but I mean, an amazing get out of jail technique that some people may not have even heard of, but uh, absolutely brilliant. Just maybe spend a, just tell us a little bit about this technique and how this got you out of jail in this particular sort of difficult, difficult case. Yeah, so the Cabral technique, you know, I, I saw many times when I was a resident at Mount Sinai in New York. And you know, when you see it so often as a resident, you think that everybody knows about it. And so one time I um, I was in a meeting talking to a lot of people, and I realized that actually not many people have heard of the Cabral technique with a Cooley fistula. And so I filmed it, <clears throat> I put it on Twitter, and just to see, you know, what the thoughts are. And it was pretty popular. And so with that in mind, I wanted to make a video and be able to disseminate it to the, the general cardiac population, because this is something that people may encounter. I mean, it's such a, a bad feeling when you do a difficult operation and you think everything's been perfect and there's just persistently mild bleeding that you know you can't close the chest, you know you can't go back up to the ICU, even if you keep the chest open and you pack, then you assume you're going to be coming back within a few hours to you know open the chest at bedside. And this is just a great, easy, easy technique to just throw that patch on there, let it drain into the right atrium, and, and not worry about it. You sleep at ease. You know, um, it, it was pretty interesting that you know on Twitter, you know, we had a pretty good discussion about it, and you know, most of these patches and the officials, I should say, they, they do close in time you know if you do get a long-term cta but sometimes they do stay open but it's very very rare that it results in any issues as in a, a you know high cardiac output you know fistula um and those situations that it's usually because it was just too much bleeding to get 
you know, you can't put this patch on there if there's some major bleeding. You know, if there's major bleeding, say, you know, at the root, then, then it's not going to work. This is for, you know, mild, persistent bleeding that you just can't get out of the operating room with. Absolutely fantastic and uh, yeah, really nice video, nice and quick. One of those ones where you, you, you hope you'll never have to use it, but when you're in that situation, you'll be glad you'd seen that video. And, uh, and maybe just while we're chatting, maybe just tell us a little bit about yourself. What's been your background? Who've been your mentors uh, to, to get you to where you are today? Yeah, so, you know, I'm originally from New Orleans. Uh, I went to Tulane and LSU Medical School. Actually, I spent eight years in the military and I had a lot of enjoyable times in the military. Then I was at Mount Sinai, worked with David Adams and Paul Stelzer and um, Alan Stewart. So did a lot of mitral and aortic work, um, as well as all the other folks there. There are lots of lots of great people there, including, you know, Dr. Joe Chickwe, you know, a lot of good people. Love my time there. I've been at Oshner. This is my sixth year. You know, enjoy doing Rosses as well as, you know, commandos, homographs, you know, mitral pairs, whatever I can get into. Uh, I also enjoy teaching. I'm the associate program director here for our fellowship program. And so uh, with the teaching, I, I try to take some of these videos. Like I have a, an internal memory or harvest takedown video on CTS and then. And actually, I just put a, a, a initiation of cardiopulmonary bypass, like tips and tricks. I just submit that to CTS and because it's just surprising that there, there are plenty of books that talk about it, but not many videos. And sometimes you get to see a video and it just makes it such a, a real idea that is actually concrete instead of abstract. And I, I like to pass that along to some of the residents and fellows. And, and even, you know, junior attendings, you can watch these, you know, videos and say, oh, yeah, you know what? I never thought about that because... When you're in your training, you get so stuck on you know one set of dogma, and, and you don't realize that there are many other ways out there. And, then, and that's why I really do like looking at the CTS Net videos as well as YouTube videos, just to see what else is out there, how other people you know handle these things. I mean, one of it is that you know, I, I watched a video recently. Um, some of the guys in Japan they, they did a hemi arch, and they were traveling about you know one to one point five centimeters when they're doing the anastomosis and i thought that was such a huge travel but it's it's actually works out fantastic so that's what i've been doing lately you know, i did a hemi arch just a few days ago and i did the same thing just travel a centimeter to a centimeter and a half and that's a huge gap in between the sutures but if it lies great hemostasis is amazing and, and so you know i love these videos i love editing i love taking them and i love teaching them well, uh, and we love you. I think your videos have been absolutely brilliant. Uh, really looking forward to your next one. Uh, that one that you've just mentioned would be brilliant for residents and it's brilliant for residents worldwide as well because uh, I know they get very well viewed this side of the pond. So so certainly for myself uh, and everyone at CTS Net, thank you so much, Steve. It was a brilliant video and we look forward to seeing many more in the future. And, uh, and it was a real pleasure. And thank you so much from everybody that's really enjoyed watching your videos. Yeah, thanks for having me. I enjoy the podcast and I look forward to being on more often.